Hi everyone, my name is David Gregg and I'll be talking to you today about how we've used Oxford Nanopore to um, better understand the diversity of sugar toxin producing E. coli um, during the context of outbreaks. So what is STEC? STEC is sugar toxin producing E. coli. It's a zoonotic foodborne pathogen and is characterized by the presence of prophage encoded sugar toxins. And it produces a wide range of symptoms, um, anything through to mild, through to severe bloody diarrhea. But it's the complications from that disease that make it a particularly nasty disease. Um, one of which is uh, hemolytic uremic syndrome, which occurs in about 10 to 15 percent of patients, and that's characterised by rapid kidney failure, and it can be fatal. So, in uh, the gastrointestinal bacteria reference unit, we type STEC using a whole genome sequencing um, and that's basically just a four-step process of culture and isolation, DNA extraction, uh, library prep and sequencing on the Illumina HiSeq and then we derive all of our typing data in silico using bioinformatics tools. The aim of this particular study was to see if we can use Oxford Nanopore sequencing to um, characterize STEC uh, 0157H7 outbreaks and um, Related to this, we want to look for microevolutionary events in the core and accessory genomes uh, within those outbreaks as well. So we retrospectively sequenced uh, three different outbreaks of different sizes. One was handling raw pet food, one was associated with a mud-based obstacle course, and one was associated with raw drinking milk. All the samples in the study were um, uh, the DNA was extracted using the Revolution FireMonkey kit and all samples were prepped using the Rapid Barcoding kit and sequenced on the Minion Mark 1B. Our bioinformatics pipeline um, to derive all the analysis is it basically starts um, with uh, base calling and demultiplexing with um, adapter trimming and then the pipeline splits in two where one is alignment based um, and that derives information such as um, virulence gene detection, MLST and determining relatedness using SNP typing and the other um, arm of the pipeline is assembly based characterization so that goes through assembly using fly and then assembly correction and then we begin to derive information on the plasmid content and we look for structural variation and we characterize the prophages within the chromosomes. So um, on to the first outbreak which was associated with handling raw pet food. So this was uh, an outbreak that occurred in uh, August 2017. Uh, we sequenced four samples from this outbreak and what we found uh, upon completion of sequencing was that um, all the samples contained the same number of prophages except one so we were finding variation in terms of the number of prophages within each sample and within the content of those prophages themselves there was actually variation as well so there was one sample that had a 53 kilobase per deletion in a large compound prophage near the terminus of, of one sample. The next outbreak was a mud-based obstacle course and this occurred in 2018 of which we had 12 samples. Nine were directly linked to the race so they were race participants and three were geographically linked to the race of which two of those samples were isolated the previous year in 2017. Now in uh, completion of sequencing we noticed that uh, all samples contained uh, an STX2A encoding prophase but not at the site we normally associate it with STX2A. Um, despite all the samples being um, very closely related, there was um, variation in, plas in plasmid content, including uh, three extra samples containing an Inc I2 plasmid, of which another one of those samples contained another Inc X4 plasmid. What was really interesting to observe was that the two samples from the previous year had a 1.44 million base pair inversion relative to the genomes that we've sequenced in 2018. And the final outbreak is associated with raw drinking milk. Um, this outbreak had 23 samples that we sequenced with from, uh, uh, from a variety of sources, uh, from human, from the animals, and from the milk itself. Um, and what we noticed was in these samples, they contained two copies of two different STX2A encoding prophages, one um, located in ARGW and one in SBCB and an interesting component of this was this is the first occurrence of finding um, an STX2A prophage at SBCB in this particular sublineage of STEC 0157 um, and compared to the previous outbreaks this one had uh, a lot less variation um, com 
uh, relative to the previous outbreaks, all had the same number of prophages, all had the same number of plasmids, but we did find some prophage content variation and one sample had a 850 kilobase per inversion relative to the other genomes. So what this has been able, or what Nanopore has been able to do for us is we're able to generate uh, this information in real time, which is allowing us to implement public health actions faster. And it's allowing to open the accessory genome of STEC outbreaks and other GI pathogens. And that allows us to detect and characterize prophase content, to isolate and type the plasmid content within each samples. And it finally allows us to look at the large scale chromosomal variation inside those samples. And this really helps us um, with character uh, rapidly characterizing and also aiding our understanding as to why these highly pathogenic strains are emerging and becoming more successful. I just want to say thanks to my managers, my PhD supervisor and my colleagues, the NIHR Health Protection Research Unit for GI um, for funding my position. And I'd like to thank Oxford Nanopore for inviting me to give this talk. Thank you very much.